everybody and welcome to creating art files and so files for applique. I'm Courtney Kibitza and today we're going to be talking about how to create specifically so files for the applique process. Now this is part one of a two-part series so this class is going to design um, basically all of the artwork or teach you how to create artwork for applique and then the two part will be next Thursday um, and we're going to go through different types of applique and ways to grow your business with different applique finishes. Um, and you can register for that at stallstv.com on the live events page to sign up for the actual decoration part of it. But you can't get to decoration without artwork. And so we're going to use today a design program that specifically is for applique and it's called Toolstitch Pro Plus. So Toolstitch Pro Plus um, is actually just a design software. So it's designed specifically for applique it's not a complete digitizing software and so this is where this kind of compares with other full digitizing software um, programs that are on the market and so this is something that we're going to use mostly for applique. It allows us to um, send out different formats for our embroidery machine and take simple vector images and vector or create so files to them so we can create different styles of applique and so I think the best way to take a look at this is just to head over at the computer and really give an overview of this program and how you can use it in your business. Um, and so we'll head over to the computer and what I have up here is just um, Toolstitch Pro Plus so this gives you an ability to see where you can access it and play around with it once you see the tutorial. Also keep in mind there's a trial version available on stalls.com that you're seeing on the site here so you can easily download the trial version play around with it and see if this makes sense for your business and what you're looking to do with this program. Once you've purchased Toolstitch Pro Plus and this design program, I have it launched here up on the screen. This is just the basic launch screen when you set, up on, set it up on your computer. I can start with a new file just by selecting the new document button up here on the toolbar on the far left hand side. And then from here is where I would normally set up and import my artwork by going into File and Import Artwork if you're sending your own artwork um, into this software. Now before I start to look at how to use it um, and importing artwork, I want to talk about the program, what we're seeing here on our screen. So on the left hand side you're noticing a sequence view. This is where all of your art will show up in your designs that you'll see throughout the program. Also stitch sequence as you're editing those, that will all show up here as well. On the right hand side, the colors that you're seeing correspond with the needles on your embroidery machine. And so I can change colors out by um, left clicking on the thread and changing the thread color. There's a variety of families that are in here. So if I'm using a specific Madeira thread and I want the color to match um, up on my software, I can do that. Likewise, if I have more needles or more. Um, needles on my machine, I can add a color or remove extra that I don't need for my embroidery machine in this program. And so I can set all of that up directly. Also on the top, in addition to open and saving and printing, you'll notice a lot of other features that we'll use throughout the program today. So um, one that we'll use often is the stitch tool, which allows us to see stitches, some 3D tools, and we'll show you those as we get the artwork put in. And so when I start to give an overview of this and I want to teach you how to use the program, the easiest way that I have found to do this is to use a piece of artwork that's inside Toolstitch Pro Plus. So if you download that trial version or when you first get this and get started, you can watch this video back and really understand how to use it, implementing the same steps that I'm going to step into um, during this live class today. And so if I select this yellow folder here, it's going to pull up my Tackle Tool artworks that are already into the system. Here I'm going to use the main Alabama file, but I just want to show you some shapes and different items that are still already built into this program that you can kind of play around with um, and add in as well if you want to just add simple shapes um, into your artwork with uh, text. So I'll go back up to that plot font. I'm just going to select that Alabama font so we can see how this program works in all of the tools. Okay, we'll drop it down onto my screen and my grid so we're seeing all of the different areas here of that Alabama design. I'll just slide over my um, properties bar there. So on the left hand side of the screen where I had mentioned your sequence view will show up, you're noticing three different colors. And so with this, um, I'm actually seeing the colors and the way that they were brought into the system. Now when I go to select them, it's actually highlighting all of the items together so I want to make sure to ungroup these items so I can edit them all individually. I'm just going to click right or right click the images, go down to ungroup 
and that will allow me to ungroup all of these separate images. So now when I select the yellow, I'm just grabbing that yellow, blue, or red. Now the way that this is set up in the sequence currently, it would read that the yellow would sew down first, then the blue, and then the red. Well, with applique, that doesn't seem to make sense because of course I've got to work from my back forward. So I'll have to switch the sequence around a little bit. I can do that just by grabbing and dragging down the colors till I get them in the sequence that I want which is red, uh, blue, and yellow. And actually, as I have yellow selected here, I'm gonna change that color out so we can see, um, see it a little bit better on the screen. Um, so I'll just select, uh, let's say this one here. I'm gonna right click the needle color and you'll notice how that'll change it. Actually, that's a little bit um, too close to what I'm already using. So I'll go with this green here so we can see that. Now, as I start to expand with the plus sign next to the color, it'll actually break out all of the different components to the artwork so I can see all of the different artwork pieces that are in that green design. Of course, it's now reading all of those um, center cavities as separate pieces, which is why we have multiple ones there. With the blue color, it's got that little extra piece here, so it's reading that big full background piece as well as that small little extra cavity in there. Um, and so I can group those together to change that, which we'll show you here shortly. Also, you'll notice a little eyeball next to that plus screen. I can actually turn off any section. Um, so if I want to just play with one area of the design, I can select that eyeball and it's going to actually get rid of those areas. So if I just want to play with my top color layer and I don't want to see the other colors, this allows me to do that. So once I have this set up, we're going to start to create our sew file on the first color of our design. Now to do this, what I want to do um, for the second step, once I have my artwork into the program, is combine and control everything um, and then transform it to stitches. And so I'll just show you as I transform this design to stitches, I'm going to right click, go down to convert to, and then you'll see a variety of different stitch types that have been built in the system. Your run stitch is your traditional bean stitch, um, your applique stitch is a satin stitch, and then tackle twill is going to be our zigzag. So I'm going to select the tackle twill for a nice zigzag stitch and it just easily imports and drops down that stitch file across my vector artwork. Now I can adjust the width for this program. Um, I can adjust the angle. You're seeing all the properties here on the right side of my screen. If you don't see these when you first go in, just simply right click on the color and click properties and this little tab here on the side will pop up. Um, so right now I'm at four millimeter. I might want to take it to a little bit smaller, maybe a three millimeter, so I can edit that. I can change my inset. It's set at 80%. Um, I might want to change it to 90% um, so it's not overhanging a little too much. I can make the density a little bit thicker or a little bit um, smaller so that it's a little more spread out in the thread angles. Also, you'll notice here I can create a placement stitch, and so I can actually um, set my placement line to be able to line up my applique. And this is very important in the applique process because you're going to want to sew out a placement line so you know to lay up those applique pieces exactly the right spot for the stitching. And so I'll select my placement line. This will automatically create it once I click apply, but before I do that, I need to make a couple of changes to the placement. One is offset, so I can leave it at zero, but if I do that, um, I may have a little bit of issues with alignment, so you're seeing how that placement stitch is outside a little bit of the stitch since I changed it to three millimeter. So I'm actually going to inset or offset the um, placement line just by about 10%, and that's going to give me a little bit extra give and make it easier to line everything up. So I'll click apply and you'll see how it's moved that placement line in a little bit more so it makes it easier to line it up and you can move it in 15, 20 percent, whatever works best for your business and your designs. Also, I'm going to want to set my placement command and so once I have that placement um, line started, I'm going to want to definitely program a stop. That way, once that stop's programmed, I can lay out, uh, lie out my different pieces of applique and then resume my stitch. So I'll add that, apply that change. And now when I apply that change, one thing that you're probably noticing on this Alabama screen is a variety of stops that were created when I created that placement line and I created that stitch. 
So if I go up to my view function, I can actually do a slow redraw, which will actually redraw exactly the way it'll look over at the embroidery machine. And I can make sure here that all of the stops or all of the positions that I or all of the trims that I want have been programmed in. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that slow redraw. Up here on my taskbar, I can start to move my bar to see how it would redraw. So I'm seeing after every individual cavity, it's programming a stop. And so what's happening here is that it's reading each of those cavities and each of those images that we saw when I expanded out the artwork. It's reading all of those as individual pieces. So the most important thing when you bring in a piece of artwork that hasn't been grouped together or combined and has a lot of cavities that you're seeing all of these artwork pieces is actually to combine them together. So I'm going to um, undo by hitting Control Z to go back to my artwork program here and where we were just at. Switch that color. So now when I expand this color three, if I right click this and go down to group it, it'll actually group all of those items together that way, or combine, I'm sorry, combine it all together um, and then it's going to actually read it all now as one image. So right click, combine, and now whenever I go through these same steps where I'm right clicking on the artwork color, converting it to a tackle twill. I can make all of my changes here, so back to my three millimeter. I'll change my inset, add my placement line with a 10% offset, and line up my placement command as a stop. Now when I click apply, you'll notice that the stops have been reduced. Now I just have to worry about one stop on the system um, and so that way, whenever it does the, when I go through and do the slow redraw, it's only going to do my one placement line, and then I can move on to my next piece of artwork since it's seeing it all as one image. One other thing that you will notice about this specific program um, that I really like is the ability to adjust the holes. So if you're looking inside the um, L here or the A, and you're noticing that the um, angles are kind of overlapping each other, you can actually click this little box hit apply and it will adjust those stitches out so that way it's not overlapping and creating a, um, un, a unique look that's uh, not desired on those letters so that way it looks pristine and in a premium um, sew file there and sew out. And so we have that all started there. Once I have the sew stitch um, created and the stop from the placement line set up, I'm going to want to edit um, other commands, so if I want to switch over here on this pro on the um, properties bar to commands, I can then change my color and the start and stop command for that color. I can also adjust the tie-offs as well if I want to for it to be a basic, a triangle, or none. Um, I'll just switch my tie-offs to basic. If I want after my command for it to frame out, I can make those changes or I can simply just make them a start and stop, and then any of those edits that I apply here at this level. When I switch over to my stitch sequence, I can see those and I can make any edits I want um, for my processes. And so I'll switch to the stitch tool, which if you're looking over here on that um, second toolbar on the top of my navigation, I'm in the sequence view currently, which is under the selection tool, and I can switch over to my stitch tool. And so when I switch over to that stitch tool, Here's where you're seeing um, exactly what my embroidery machine when I sew it out. So I'm seeing two stops. I'm seeing a stop at the end of my placement stitch. I'm seeing a stop at the end of my um, complete sew out. I can also even see the, the number of stitches that are required for this piece of artwork. Um, I'm seeing that here and where I'm at throughout the entire process. This stitch view also has a separate um, screen that you're seeing here up with the properties on the right hand side. So I can adjust any of the areas of this um, process. So if I want this stop to frame out, I can actually change this command in this process so that it fits what I want it to do um, during my process or I can add or any, make any changes that I want to um, in the software for my embroidery machine. So switch back to my main view here where I have the multiple colors and we'll just walk through the same process for the additional colors. So I'm going to turn on my blue color. 
I'm going to need to combine them together. So the first thing you do when you bring your artwork in is you import your artwork and then you always combine any images that have multiple steps and that way you don't run into having to go back or ending up with more stops than you want when you run through the applique process. I've combined it so I'm going to go ahead and right click, convert those to a tackle twill. I can make any adjustments I would like to the width so that it doesn't overlap or that it looks the way I want it to look. I can change the inset as I did on the first one. If I want an additional placement line, I can make those additions um, in this step here. Also adjusting any holes. I'll select apply so it'll make all of those changes. And then you're seeing all of those same changes. So I'm seeing the stitch count put in, I'm seeing the placement line, and all of those changes made um, to that second color. And so I just need to do that one more time to the last color. So I'll return on the background by hitting the eyeglass next to the color 11. Right click. This one does not have any additional areas. When I expand it using that plus sign, you're seeing only one section. So I don't need to worry about combining it there, but I do want to convert by right clicking and selecting tackle twill. And then making those edits um, to my tackle twill stitch line. Once I have this all set up, if I want to um, give the appearance of what this would look like maybe to my embroiderer or um, just so we're able to match it up and keep it kind of the production ready print throughout the production process, I can actually go into my command section and since I have all of my thread colors set up correctly, my embroiderer will know which color of the machine to use. I can also select the fabric color. So you'll see down here under fabric, it has a variety of choices I can choose from. Once I click apply, it'll start to apply those um, down to the artwork. And so that's applying it to my background color. This probably won't look the most beautiful, but I'm just going to select a few colors here so we can get the idea of how I can create a photo realistic look here. Go with black. And then our final color will be commands, fabric. We'll go with purple looks good. Okay, so this gives me my three color image, and now I can see what it would look like with the twill colors. I can give that to my embroiderer. Also, if I want to, I can actually select a fabric color up here on the top um, to be able to put a background down. Um, on the item as well if I'd like to. So if I'm sewing this out on in a twill color, I can actually see what this would look like on yellow as I'm selecting my colors in this program and in this software. And the poly tool colors in here do match up to the poly tool colors available from stalls. So if you're seeing dolphin, it's the dolphin color um, from stalls that you're looking at there. And so this gives me a way to create those applique files. Now in the beginning of the class, I did mention that um, Tool Stitch Pro isn't a complete, or a complete digitizing software where I could bring in a um, complete piece of artwork and just digitize from start to finish. Um, if so, if I have a teddy bear or something I want to digitize, that's not really going to work for this program. Now what you could do for that process is if you go to GreatDaneGraphics.com, they do sell a variety of um, pre-digitized clip art images and their subscription programs. You could certainly download any of those and then import those into the software if you wanted to add a quick name to it or add it to your applique so file. So if you've purchased any um, embroidery pre-digitized artwork from Great Dane Graphics or Dakota to collect Collectibles, you can bring that into this specific program here. And so um, I've got this all set up, but what I can do on this program I wanted to mention is I can add name drops or embroidery fonts to it. So by selecting this A plus or A1, up here on the top of my screen, it's going to open up a font option so I can select it down on my screen. And then right here on the side, my properties bar is actually changed to be the um, properties bar in the edit tool for the text. And so I'll type my name in here. I can edit my font. I can edit the height or the width of my artwork. I can edit the line spacing, I can center it, and make a variety of changes to the artwork. I'm just going to quickly 
type my name back in there since I made a couple changes, click apply, and then we're seeing how it drops my name directly down on here. Now this is pre-digitized font, so these are specifically set up in this program to sew out exactly on your embroidered machine. So you can add personalization to any school design easily in this program as well, so it doesn't have to all be set up um, in your vectorized program. Also, if you look at the A2 button, just as a pre-mention, it has auto-stitch font. So if you've ever purchased Mega Greek letters or some of the Pro Block letters from Stalls, this gives you the ability to create your own sew files in this program um, for that actual um, letters that you purchase from Stalls. So that helps to give us kind of a basic overview um, of the program. Like I said, you can watch this back and you can understand how to use the program with your vector artwork, but I want to show two other examples um, of how to use this program for using your own design software. So keep in mind when you create artwork for Twill Stitch Pro Plus, it absolutely has to be a vector format program. And so I can use something like Corel Draw. I can also use CADWorks Live. And so if you've never uh, experienced CADWorks Live, it is a free online design tool. All I need to make sure I can do when I get to this process is I need to be able to export from my design tool as a PLT file. So a plotter file or PLT is the file type that I can import into Toolstitch Pro Plus. And so I've launched my design studio here. If I have a piece of artwork that I like um, on in my CAD works, I can go ahead and use that. I could also um, create text, fonts, and a variety of images from scratch in this program as well. So let's see, I just want to go with a nice big T for a schoolwear design and maybe add Titans throughout it. Go ahead and select my font. I can adjust my sizing if I want. And if you haven't seen CADWorks Live, um, Stalls TV has a variety of tutorials on how to use this program for creating t-shirt art. It's really robust if you're creating t-shirts for um, any market or any sign market, anything like that. It's just really designed for vinyl cutting and creating vector artwork for a variety of processes like screen printing as well as um, applique. So I'm going to add my second part of text on here. It's just going to say Titans in a script font. So I can rotate this to fit the design or make any edits that I want um, to this artwork before I bring it in. Also, I'm going to go ahead and just weld this together because script fonts tend to cut into each other, so I want to make sure I have one cohesive piece there. Now, once I have my artwork created and I have it sized to what I want it to be, this one here is reading a little bit large. I'll stretch it out and shrink it down a little so it's not too big on my sweatshirt. And now when I go up to my file options, here's where I can export this as a PLT file. So I'm going to go ahead and put Titans applique. Export it as a vector format. So you're seeing all of the formats I can export at, out of in CADWorks Live. So I want the PLT option. Select OK. I'm using Google Chrome, so it's going to drop it down into um, the download bar on my machine. And then I can open this up if I want to in Corel, or I can just save it down to a folder file um, to be able to put it into my program. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this real quick. I have two Titans designs, so I need to put a two there to save this one so we know which one we're using. And now once I have my artwork, um, whether I created in Corel Draw or Illustrator, however I export it out as a PLT file, I can go in and start over. So I'm going to create another new screen in my Tool Stitch Pro. I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to import my artwork. So I can grab any artwork image that I have. I'm going to grab Titans. 
I can move my artwork if I want um, to make any edits to it here. So if I didn't center it and I wanted this Titans to move a little bit, I could do that in this um, artwork here. Now you're noticing that this, although it's a single color design and I want to digitize it completely as one image, it's reading all of those pieces of artwork as that multiple colors. So I'm definitely going to want to right click, combine them together so I'm reading all of this as one image instead of seeing all the separate pieces that we saw when I brought it in. And then I'm going to do a different type of stitch and sew file. And so the first sew file that we just showed you with that Alabama design works really great for standard applique. There's not a ton of stitches involved. Um, it's fast and easy, and it looks um, and gives a premium look that's usually commanded and, and is achieved with the applique. But with this program, I'm actually going to be using this Titans design to use a glitter applique for our class um, next Thursday with ripaway applique. And so if you haven't seen ripaway applique, it's a really cool method where you actually use a heat transfer material directly over top of um, the program. And I'll show you guys real quick the way it works just to give you a test of what you'll see next week, but you basically take a sheet of the material directly over um, your placement stitch and then you tear away what you don't want. And when you rip away that material, that starts to create some of these premium finishes that we're seeing with glitters and um, thermofilm, which gets kind of a faux leather look, flock, reflective. And we'll really talk about these looks here, but the, what allows me to be able to tear away this piece um, in my design is the actual sew file. And so a zigzag stitch won't work for this. I'm going to have to create a satin stitch, which is just a much more dense stitch. And so we'll switch back to the program and show how to create a satin stitch there. And so this time I'm going to right click and convert to an applique stitch, which is actually the stitch that we need for rip away applique. Now an applique stitch is going to be much more dense and a lot more uh, full, so it's going to take a few more minutes or a few more seconds to render this out on my program than a zigzag would. So we're seeing here my very dense stitch and I can change the color if I'd like of this stitch type to match the market that I'm selling to or that I'm printing for. We'll go with blue um, just by right clicking that color screen on the right hand side. But with this here I can start to change my applique type so I can change this from a satin stitch if I want. Now satin is definitely what I want for rip away, so I'm going to leave it as is the default. I can change the width, and so I can change this from 3.5 millimeters to maybe 3 millimeters or 4 millimeters. You'll notice as I reduce or change the millimeters, it's actually going to make it a little bit more um, close together, specifically on this tightened area here. So I'm going to switch that to a 4 that would make it a little bit more spaced out. I have found when I do the rip away applique materials, for me, three millimeters is ideal. Um, you're noticing on that four how I'm now seeing more gap spacing in throughout the threading. Specifically, if you're using something like glitter flake, which is one of the most popular materials for rip away applique, you're going to see some of that glitter particle or that material shining through a little bit if you have a, a lower or a higher density on that applique width and the stitch there. So I'm going to make those changes to both the width. Um, and the density here on my machine. I'm going to take a couple seconds to render those out. Once I have those stitches that I'd like in place, I can change the inset, I can change the stitch length, all of those same edits I can make over at the zigzag stage. I can also set up my placement line, so I definitely want to do that for rip away applique because you place your placement stitch down first and then you run your satin stitch for the final application. I don't need to adjust any holes on this one, it all looks clean, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And once it applies to make all of those changes, I can go ahead and make any changes to my command. So if I want to change my start and stop um, to any specific changes, I can make that if I want to add a fabric color just so I can see. Unfortunately, the glitter flight colors aren't in here, but if I wanted to make sure red's going to be the color that I want, um, that it looks good with this sew type or this so they can get an idea over at the embroidery machine what color is going to be used, I can select that fabric color. And so this makes it incredibly easy for me to start creating my own applique, whether it's for rip away applique or just standard applique, 
Now standard applique you would, uh, would require you to cut on a vinyl cutter or a laser cutter, but we'll talk more about that um, next week on Thursday. This specifically allows you to just create those sew files for it. For the last um, one I want to show you guys would be another option for when we want to create um, names and numbers or a traditional applique name and number or standard design out of Corel Draw. And so I'm going to open up my Corel Draw here, just open up a blank page. And I'll start by creating my name and number here just by selecting my font tool. I don't have any athletic font, so I'm just going to roll with this impact font for the example in my Corel Draw. So I'm going to go with Kibitza. Well, let's change it to, let's do 87. 13 is my standard number, but I thought I'd switch it up today. I can make this larger, I'll drag it out a little bit. Now if I want to make sure this is definitely an 8 inch number or a 10 inch number, I can make those changes up in the top of my Corel program. Once I have my artwork completely set up with the gap space I want, um, I can make any changes. So I'm definitely going to want to make sure that this is set up ready to sew out since I'm doing the uh, applique stitch as one file. So if I need to make the sheet a little bit larger to enhance it, I can make those edits and changes here. Also, I want to go ahead and select all these images here and just convert them to curves so they're reading as a vector piece here. Once I have this created, I'm just going to go up to File, and then I can easily export this out as a name and number as a PLT file. Alright, so I'll export that as my PLT. I can save it to that same file folder that I was going to bring in all of my other artwork to in my um, program. And then I'll switch back over to Tool Stitch Pro. I can X out of any of these old designs or go ahead and start a new one by opening a new page. And so I'm going to go ahead and file, import in my name and number artwork it's a PLT file. And again, I'm seeing all of these additional cavities and all of these letters as separate pieces. You're noticing that as I'm selecting them individually. So I'm going to definitely want to right click and make sure to combine everything together so when I create my sew stitch, I don't have too many starts and stops in my embroidery machine that can run as one seamless workflow once I lay out the applique. And so I'm reading this all now as one piece. This time I could go with a standard zigzag stitch, which is that tackle twill, tackle twill stitch that we saw um, on the Alabama example, but I, which is pretty standard for names and numbers. Most often we do see with traditional tackle twill on team uniforms a tackle twill stitch. But I also want to show the option for a run stitch um, or a bean stitch just for a different example. And this stitch type I find to be really popular with um, maybe a distressed applique or a more um, school design or fan wear design where it's going to be maybe on a hooded sweatshirt and it's going to be a little bit more fashionable. That's where we see a lot of the bean stitches used currently. And so again it sets up my stitch type. Here I can change it from a standard run stitch to a bean stitch. Click apply to make that change. And I can also change the stitch length if I'd like to as well from the three millimeter that it sets to as a default. Um, it does take a few seconds sometimes to render out the stitch types depending on the detail in the artwork um, as well as the type of stitch and so file that you're creating. Again, I can edit the command. So each of these stitch types are going to be a little bit different in their property screen and you're seeing that here but the command section is always going to be the same. I can edit my colors. So if I want it to be a cardinal, I can make that change on that right hand side under my needle colors. I can um, adjust the command section. So making my fabric color, making my starts and stops. If I want it to frame out, if I want it to start normal, do a basic tie off. 
and all of this is going to be set up. So when I export these out, which I'll show you here shortly, to my file type for my embroidery machine, um, all of this is already built in as far as the sew uh, sequence when I set it over there. So I'm going to apply these pieces of artwork and images into the program here. Okay, so once we have that set up, one thing also to keep in mind is if I want to, I can again do that slow redraw if I want to see the way it's going to look. I can also um, zoom in, so I'm at 31% here, but if I wanted to zoom in more to see my sew, my sew type or anything like that, I can zoom in. Here I just did a little 3D option which actually enhances it and makes it look like a true um, thread that's on the machine or kind of gets a photorealistic idea there of what it's going to look like once it's sewn out. I'm going to zoom it back out to fit so we can see everything as is. Now you're really starting to see where some of those starts and stops are. You're seeing where the trims are. You're seeing all of those pieces um, put together in this artwork design here. So once I have my sew files created, the only thing really left to do is to export this out to put it to my embroidery machine. And so I can easily do that just by saving as and then choosing my file type. So I'll go save as and then it's the save as type. You're seeing a variety of files that will vary depending on the embroidery machine that you're using as well as just a standard um, DST file if you're using just kind of a, a standard type of DSD file with your machines. Um, but it also has some specific brands in here. Um, SWF, we have Happy, we have ZSK, Bruden. So there's a variety of machines already built in. And once I export that out, I can export it into a file on my computer, or drop it on a USB drive, and that way I can take it over to uh, my embroidery machine. So that helps to give you kind of a basic overview of Tool Stitch Pro and all of the things that you can do to it. Um, it's a really robust system. There's a lot of things that you can do once you really start to um, get in there and play around. All you really need to do to get started is really create your vector file and a vector program. So that's where we looked at the CADWorks Live, we looked at the Corel Draw, Adobe Illustrator, all of those programs that are going to be able to create a vector artwork and export it out to a PLT. Once you have that, all you need to do is open the Tool Stitch Pro software import your PLT file and then go through the process so we combined our artwork to make sure it's reading as one image and then converted it to the stitch type and made any edits to our stitches that we wanted to. So if I changed the width or the angle or added a placement line, I made all of those edits. But it's really that simple. We can um, start creating applique using this program in about six steps and that includes creating your artwork. So you can already start to see the fast and ease if you're doing a lot of applique in your business. Now next week we'll dive more into how to grow sales with applique in different markets for it, but there's a lot of opportunity with applique and being able to specifically um, cut down your sew time and also being able to improve your profits and offer different designs to your customers. Um, Karen, have we gotten any questions in throughout the class? Okay, awesome. If you guys have questions, we're over at the Stalls TV forum. We're always answering them on this program as well as any other heat printing questions that you guys have. and We'd love to hear from you. Um, tune in next Thursday for that class on creating applique finishes, and I'll see you then. Thanks for attending.